SPEKTRR or Radioastron is a Russian scientific satellite with a 10 meters 33 feet radio telescope on board. It was launched on the 18th of July 2011 by Zenit 3F launcher from Baikonur Cosmodrome to perform research on the structure and dynamics of radio sources within and beyond our galaxy. Together with some of the largest ground-based radio telescopes, this telescope forms interferometric baselines extending up to 350,000 kilometers (220,000 miles). Topic overview. The SPEKTRR project is funded by the Astro Space Center of Russia, and was launched into Earth orbit on 18 July 2011, with a perigee of 10,000 km miles and an apogee of 390,000 km miles, about 700 times the orbital height of the Hubble Space Telescope at its highest point and 20 times at its lowest. In comparison, the average distance from Earth to the Moon is 384,400 kilometers (238,900 miles). The main scientific goal of the mission is the study of astronomical objects with an angular resolution up to a few millionths of an arcsecond. This is accomplished by using the satellite in conjunction with ground-based observatories and interferometry techniques. Another purpose of the project was to develop an understanding of fundamental issues of astrophysics and cosmology. This included star formations, the structure of galaxies, interstellar space, black holes and dark matter. SPEKTRR is one of the instruments in the Radioastron program, an international network of observatories led by the Astro Space Center of the Lebedev Physical Institute. The telescope is intended for radio astrophysical observations of extragalactic objects with ultra high resolution, as well as researching of characteristics of near Earth and interplanetary plasma. The very high angular resolving power will be achieved when used in conjunction with a ground-based system of radio telescopes and interferometrical methods, operating at wavelengths of 1.35 to 6.0, 18.0 and 92.0 cm. Once in space, the flower-like main dish was to open its 27 petals within 30 minutes. There is a science payload of opportunity on board, Plasma F, which consists of four instruments to observe solar wind and the outer magnetosphere. These instruments are the Energetic Particle Spectrometer MEP2, the Magnetometer MMFF, the Solar Wind Monitor BMSW, and the Data Collection and Processing Unit SSNI2. At launch, the mass of the spacecraft was 3,660 kg. 8 pounds. It was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on 18 July 2011 at 2.31 UTC by a Zenit 3F launch vehicle, which is composed of a Zenit 2M with a Fregat SB upper stage. History of the project At the beginning of the 1980s, one of the USSR's leading developers of scientific space probes had completed a preliminary design of a revolutionary, new generation spacecrafts, 1F and 2F. The main purpose of SPEKTR was to develop a common platform that could be used for future deep space missions. NPO Lavochkin, hoped to use the designs of the 1F as the standard design for space telescopes. In 1982, Lavochkin had completed technical blueprints for Radioastron, a space-based radio telescope. The expectation was that the 1F and 2F spacecraft would follow the expectations of the Radioastron mission, also known as Astron 2. Early on, many criticized the 1F platform for its questionable astrophysics missions, even when compared to the older 4-volt spacecraft bus. Although the altitude control system of the 1F seemed to have little issues navigating planetary probes, its accuracy was much below the standard requirements for a high-precision telescope. To add to 1F's technical issues, the spacecraft seemed to lack electrically driven fly wheels, which critics believed would have increased its stabilization in space. The spacecraft also failed to have a movable solar panel system, which could track the position of the Sun without requiring the entire satellite to reposition, eventually disrupting the observations process. On 1 August 1983, VPK, the Soviet Military Industrial Commission commissioned an official decision number 274, titled, on works for creation of automated interplanetary vehicles for the exploration of planets of the Solar System, the Moon and cosmic space." This document outlined a new impetus for the development of satellites. 
The new technical proposal submitted in mid-1984 included a gamma-ray telescope designated to register radio waves in the millimeter range. Both of these satellites incorporated rotating solar panels, a highly sensitive star tracking operating system and fly wheels. By the end of the 1980s, NPO Lavochkin designer general, Vyacheslav Kovtunenko, proposed to design all future astrophysics satellites on the current OCO-1 spacecraft model, designed originally to track incoming ballistic missiles. According to this plan, OCO-1 a missile-watching infrared telescope would eventually be replaced with scientific instruments where the satellite would be pointed towards space rather than Earth. Topic. Observing techniques Using a technique called very long baseline interferometry, it was anticipated that ground telescopes in Australia, Chile, China, India, Japan, Korea, Mexico, Russia, South Africa, Ukraine and the United States would jointly make observations with the Radioastron spacecraft. The Radioastron satellite's main 10-meter radio telescope would communicate in four different bands of radio waves with the international ground telescopes. It can also locate sources from two frequencies simultaneously. The SPEKTRR was also planned to include a secondary BMSV within the Plasma F experiment, the goal of which was to measure the directions and intensity of solar wind. In May 2011, the news agency RIA Novosti reported that the BMSV instrument would indeed be on board. It was also reported that the BMSV would carry a micrometeoroid counter made in Germany. The radioastron was expected to extend into a highly elliptical orbit in the Fregat state of the Zenit rocket's launch. SPEKTRR's closest point perigee would be 500 km 310 miles above the Earth's surface, with its apogee 340,000 km 210,000 miles away. The operational orbit would last at least nine years, with the radioastron never being in the Earth's shadow for more than two hours. With its apogee as far as the orbit of the Moon, SPEKTRR could be considered a deep space mission. In fact, the gravitational pull of the Moon was expected to fluctuate the satellite's orbit in three-year cycles, with its apogee traveling between 265,000 and 360,000 kilometers miles from Earth and its perigee between 400 and 65,000 kilometers and 40,390 miles. Each orbit would take radioastron around eight to nine days. This drift would vastly augment the telescope's range of vision. It was estimated that the satellite would have upwards of 80% of its potential targets within view at any one point in its orbit. The first 45 days of SPEKTRR's orbit were scheduled to consist of engineering commissioning, that is, the launch of the main antenna, various systems checks and communications tests. SPEKTRR's tracking was to be handled by the RT-22 radio telescope in Pushchino, Russia. Flight control would be operated by ground stations in Medvezi Ozera, near Moscow, and Ussurysk in Russia's far east. Other SPEKTRR joint observations would be handled by ground telescopes in Arecibo, Battery, Effelsberg, Green Bank, Medicina, Noto, Svetlo, Zelenchukskaya and Westerbork. The SPEKTRR project was to be led by the Russian Academy of Sciences's Astro Space Center within the Lebedev Institute of Lebedev Physics Institute, also known as FIAN. The radio receivers on SPEKTRR were largely built in India and Australia. On earlier plans, two additional receivers were to be provided by firms under contract with the European VLBI Consortium, the EVN. These additional payloads were eventually cancelled, with the project citing old age. Similar Russian materials replaced the Indian and Australian instruments. Topic. References Topic. External links Radioastron website